Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. Well, actually, this reasonably big guy right here. This is the Spyderco Knives Pacific Salt Number no. 2. Um, first off, though, uh, in the name of full disclosure, I want to thank Spyderco very much for sending this guy along. That's right, I reached out to Spyderco the moment these guys were announced, the LC200 and Salt 2s. It's like, yes, I want to check one out. Thank you very much. Um, they said, well, I told them as always, though, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. They still sent it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my absolute best uh, to make sure that this isn't affecting the nature or quality of my review, but there you go. Um, next thing, let's do some size comparison real quick. Here, this guy is against the Spydeco Delica, and what we see here is that this is Endura size, and in fact, this is the Pacific Salt 2, which is based on the Endura platform. Um, the, the original Pacific Salt was an old version of the Endura. Uh, this is the Endura 4, basically, but just made into a salty one, right? Um, and so, th th there are a lot of similarities between the Endura and the, uh, the the Salt 2 here, but there are some important differences. We'll touch on those in the review here. Um, so there you go. Um, that's your delicate size comparison. Here it is against the, um, the Spydeco uh, PM2 here. And so what we see here is in terms of sharpened length, actually it's a little longer than the PM2, and in terms of like legal length, we measure this guy out, we're coming in over three and three quarter inches as opposed to three and a half on the PM2 Yeah. Biggie. Uh, and then finally, uh, here it is against the Ontario Rat number two. So, yeah, that's a, uh, th th that is what we call in the business a big old freaking knife. So, um, th 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 there is that. Next thing, this is a new version, and actually, because it happens to be on my table at this very moment, here it is against the Spydeco Rock Jumper. And what we see here is that although the handles are similar in thickness, they are, the, this guy is a little bit thinner overall and a little bit longer. So, uh, th 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 there you go. Um, next thing, uh, this is the version of this guy in LC 200 and steel. This is one of the major differences between the Spydeco Salt series of yore and the, the, the modern iteration and the green handles is the steel. This is LC200N. Uh, this is a steel also known as Z-Finite um, or uh, Chronodur 30. It's got many names, but the thing is, it's a great freaking steel. And more importantly, it is a rust-proof steel. I mean, okay, maybe it is rust-resistant. Maybe it's like, oh my god, so rust-resistant that I have never been able to get this stuff to rust. But it, it is basically rust-proof. Functionally speaking, it will not rust. So that's a beautiful thing. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting knife right here. Start with, uh, one of the things that is very different about this guy relative to the Endura is the, the, the weight, and that's because unlike the Endura, this does not have liners. This doesn't have an internal liner like we see here on the Delica. I don't have an Endura around, by the way. Uh, that's why you're seeing that. But um, this is just a, two chunks of plastic with a backlock in the middle there. As a result, this guy comes in even lighter than the Endura. I'm showing this guy at 2.54 ounces as opposed to uh, north of 3 for the, uh, the for the Endura. So this is actually a lighter weight knife, and the, the Endura is already a pretty lightweight knife for the blade length. And so I like that actually very much. Um, and it, the balance on it is just about where you'd want it to be. I, the, the lightness of this guy is quite nice. Next thing, this is a very visible knife. Um, oh, you're not going to drop this one somewhere and lose it, right? Um, this is maybe in a gas station, but that's... That's a, that's a different point entirely. Um, th th this guy is a very, very visible knife, and that's that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, this has a four-position clip with a uh, tip down or tip up, left side or right side, and that's beautiful because this is a fully ambidextrous knife. You can operate the back lock. This is a back lock knife. To unlock the knife, you squeeze right there, squeeze that part in there, closes. This is fully ambi, so 10% of the population is going to love that. Next thing, this has great ergos. Um, the, the Endura generally has always had great ergos, but it's got a nice thumb ramp here. It's got, it just, it goes well in the hand, and even for my relatively small hands, this, this absolutely fits well. I would even go so far, I like the Delica. It's a great knife, um, but I will say the Endura's ergos are a little better still, so um, that, that, that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, this is well textured. This is crazy textured. This has the Spydeco Vulcan Volcano style, uh, you know, sticking up, uh, sticking up a dude, uh, uh, the FRN molding here. That's the technical term for it, of course, the FRN sticking up a dude molding. Uh, but anyways, this guy is not going anywhere in your hand. Between the thumb ramp here, between this little guard area, as well as this, this is a knife that would be just as at home in the Vaseline factory as on the high seas. Um, it, it, this will not slip out of your hand no matter what you do. And so if you're on an oil rig, this might be something you reach for because, oh boy, is this ready for wet and slippery. So that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, price-wise. 
Now, look, it's 100 bucks. 100 bucks, that's a fair chunk of change for a pocket knife, right? I, I, I get that. I mean, I sure do long for the days of the $70 Delica and Endura. Oh, boy. The thing is, though, this is cheaper than any other LC200N knife in Spyderco's lineup, and I believe from other makers. Let me know in the comments if someone else is, uh, you know, in the mainstream doing LC200N cheaper than that. But the thing is, this is coming in at 100 bucks is the price here. The Native 5 Salt's at 135 The Siren's, I think, 160 The Caribbean's 180 Um, Cheaper than the Spidey Chef at 234 and this is by the way in November of 2020 um uh, but this is not the cheapest FRN knife ever by any stretch of the imagination if you're just looking for a cheap knife by god you can get cheaper but LC200N I think is worth paying for and especially if you want the specialized features here yeah it's worth it price so I don't find the price terrible although I sure wouldn't mind if it were a little cheaper right next thing this is a very functionally minded knife um this is a silly thing to say but it you know the blade stock is of reasonable thickness here it is ground to cut things um it's stays well in the hand. It's secure. It's beefy, but without being too stupid, I really just, I, this is a, a knife that is really good for just general purpose cutting, right? The Delica, the Endura have been, you know, companions for people who need cutting tools for a long time, and there's a good reason for that. And seeing it in this platform with a steel that is a major upgrade from VG10, in my estimation, which is what the Endura and Delica usually ship with. Um, oh boy, is that a win for me. And then finally, um, this guy is a, a very uh, easy to carry package for a very large blade. I mean, seriously, this blade is not to be trifled with. We are looking at 3.3, uh, uh, 3.75 inches, 3.3 quarters. That's not a thing to say. Anyways, um, it is a um, 3.3 quarters would be like Anyways, I move on. Uh, the, 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 this is big uh, in terms of blade, but it's not all that big in terms of pocket, right? Um, they, you know, definitely there's a little bit of extra room because of the the, the the choil in there and whatnot, but it is a relatively thin knife. It is very lightweight, all things considered. It's well-shaped for the pocket, hanging off to the side of the pocket here. The Endura is a knife that carries a lot smaller than it actually is, and so I appreciate that very much. And so to me, all of that is what's good here. That is a huge blade and a pretty easy to carry faction. Uh, faction. Wow. Faction? Package? Fashion? Maybe I, I am a fashion blogger. Anyways, I digress. It's a huge blade and an easy to carry uh, package. It's functionally minded. Oh, maybe function is where I was mixing that in there. Uh, it's got a decent price. Look, talking is hard. You try and do it. Um, I. Yeah, anyways, uh, it's got a decent price. Texturing makes it pretty good in slippery conditions. Good ergos, fully MB, full position clip, uh, very visible coloration, and it's light for its size. On the great side, LC200N. Look, this is a steel that is a very solid all around this steel, right? LC200N is a steel I would be very happy to see on pretty much any pocket knife in the in the world. I'm not saying it's the greatest edge retention beast out there. No, that's not true. Um, but this is a very well balanced steel and that it's got enough edge retention for everyday life, 100%. Um, and it's a steel that I would be very happy to carry around even if I lived in the middle of the freaking desert, right? If moisture wasn't, if I was out there running evaporator farm on Tatooine, I could still carry this knife quite happily. But it happens to be basically rust-proof. Um, like I said, there is, uh, maybe you can be creative. Like, I'm sure a chemist could find a way to rust this steel, but I sure haven't. And I've tried in the past, right? Um, and so it is a really, really nice steel. And the fact that this knife, then, is completely sea-friendly. It is rust-proof blade and just uh, coated hardware, all of this stuff, the plastic line is so there's nothing to corrode away. Um, that is, that's a beautiful thing. That makes this a much more compelling choice for a group of people for whom the Endura might have already been a really compelling choice. And so seeing the Endura or the Pacific Salt Line or just the Salt Line in general get the LC200N treatment is a joy. Um, and this is a steel that is completely rust-proof while still being worth a damn. As a little bit of an aside, the previous salt iterations were an H1 steel. H1 steel is a steel that is actually, it, it, it performs all right in serrations, but it just, it, to my standards, it did not pass muster for edge retention. It, you found, I found myself resharpening it constantly. It was a... Uh, I know that it served a purpose, but LC200N is here now. We're done with H1. At least in my estimation, there is absolutely no reason I would ever choose H1 over LC200N. And I'm really, really glad to see that Spider-Go is starting to agree and upgrading the salt line away from H1. Um, maybe in the comments, you can let me know if there's some reason, aside from being really passionate about sharpening a great deal. Um, I, I see no reason there. So LC200N is the great here. And the, the end result of this knife is completely rust-proof. And that's a good specialist kind of thing that to me is amazing on the bad side to start with where have i seen this color before 
Just saying. Um, immediately, the name when this was released was The Sea Hunter, which I'm kind of loving, right? So The Sea Hunter is definitely, it's got a special place in my heart here, um, e even if it's mostly intended, I gather, for high visibility. So, uh, yeah, they, 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 it's like a match made in heaven, and I'm kind of appreciating that. Next thing, this is a pretty huge knife. Um, seriously, this is big. Unless you need this much blade, you might consider going with something a little bit smaller, right? Um, th this is definitely diving under the tables at lunch at work sort of big. Um, th this is gonna be a big knife, so keep that in mind. Next thing, this is not a seriously hard-use, overbuilty sort of thing. The tip on it is reasonably fine. You can see here it comes down to a pretty thin edge. That's a great thing when it comes to cutting, but if you're a person who wants to pry and whatnot with your knife, A, get a pry bar, don't use your knife for that, and B, you might not consider this. And with the thin blade and the linerless construction, we would probably assume that this is not the best knife ever to beat on left and right next thing. Um, you know, the, the disassembly thing, although it's much better than the original in the, uh, well, is it really? So, I mean, if you watch the disassembly, what you see is that it doesn't have that one little plastic post thing. That was the major issue with the Delica and the Endura um, and was a major pain in the neck. This doesn't have that problem, but it still manages to be a little bit frustrating in that if they put the pocket on the other side, this would have been a cinch to put back together. Otherwise, a little bit of a pain. Not the end of the world, but uh, I'm nitpicking here. I'm, I'm I, this was one of those things where I was hoping we had gotten past that moment. Um, but nonetheless, hey, whatever it is, it works out. Next thing, if you are a person who enjoys fidgeting and flicking your knives, back locks are not going to be the win for you, right? Because you can flick this guy out. Ah! But you need a lot of wrist. I cannot do this under a camera without likely stabbing myself and or my wall and or my iPad. And none of those things are things I'm looking to stab at this very moment here. So, I'm, uh, you know, it's not a flicky knife. You, This is one that you open very easily with your thumb in that way. And I've managed to flick it on occasion, but it really requires a grand gesture. So if you're looking for a fidgety sort of thing, you, you do not want an FRN, despite a go, frankly, ever. Um, but especially, well, okay, that's not true. The pair of three lightweight is okay. But um, the, the back locks are just not going to be for that. And then um, on the bad side, the uh, painted clip on this is going to show a little bit of wear. It's not going to be something that's going to, you know, age beautifully. I understand in this case, it's a corrosion resistance thing, but you do want to keep that in mind. And there may come a point where you end up sanding off that paint and, uh, you know, going at it without it someday. And then finally on the bad side, this definitely needs some chamfering. This guy came out of the factory a little bit sharp, both on the, the, the edges of the blade here, as well as on the inside of the spider hole. They've done a little tiny bit of it, but I definitely, this needs a visit from the chamfering fairy. Just go around the inside of that hole there, go around the top there. That would just make this a lot smoother and a lot, it would carry a lot nicer. Um, I, I just, uh, this needs a little chamfering, that's all. Not the end of the world, but um, to me at least that's what's bad here, is it needs a little chamfering. The uh, painted clip is going to show some scratches. Um, it's not a flicky knife. This assembly, eh, they, they, they were close, but not quite. Um, it's not a really hard UC sort of overbuilty thing, which is something you're going to want to keep in mind. It is pretty huge, and the color is uh, reminiscent. Um, on the uh, ugly front, there's nothing really ugly here. Um, the, the disassembly wasn't so bad, so uh, that's that was the main ugly with the Endura. So uh, we can go into our final conclusion, which is that the Endura remains a pretty popular design, right? It endures in the consciousness because it's got good ergos. It's lightweight. It's got excellent grip. And the, the Endura, especially when it's paired with a modern steel, is a gem. It remains so. Um, the, the Delica and Endura line have been sort of slipping off my radar just because the value hasn't been there. They've been using VG10, which is a good budget steel, but not <laughs> they're not good budget knives anymore. Or at least they're not budget knives anymore. Um, but anyways, when you pair the Endura platform and the Delica platform with a modern steel, you can still get something that is absolutely a gem. And this is is sort of the Endura platform, but it's lighter because it's gone linerless and it happens to be completely rust proof. And that is a beautiful thing. And it's also just a great way to carry a huge knife e efficiently. It's efficient in terms of weight, pretty light for the size. It's efficient in terms of cost, being not so crazy relative to your other rust proof options. And it's a bunch of freaking blade in the pocket, which can do some pretty serious work. And in terms of rust proof options, this is now a very, I mean, it's toward the, bodge, b the budget, well, the bottom budget end 
end of the, the, the spectrum. I'm not saying it's a $40 knife, but in terms of LC200N, I don't know that there's much cheaper here. So I'm pretty impressed with this guy overall. It remains pretty big. It's not exactly a hard-use beatery knife. It's not flicky. It's got the bad clip. Uh, I'm sorry, the bad clip. The clip itself is fine. It's got the black clip, which I don't personally care for that much, and it definitely needs a visit from the chamfering fairy up in here. But uh, look, my final conclusion is this is pretty great, right? It's a, a waterproof knife, um, and it's a pretty damn solid EDC choice, and you know what? It's a, it's a freaking gem. Um, the, the size is definitely going to be a factor for you here. I mean, if you're looking for something, uh, let's see here. This is not the native salt exactly, but this is the native five lightweight. Um, and if you're looking for something that is also rust proof, but is a little bit smaller, a little bit more people friendly, so to speak, if you're dealing with scared people, at least the native five platform might be a little bit better suited for what you're doing there. It's also a little bit beefier, a little bit, you know, it's going to feel different in the hand. Um, but you know, you can get this in the same steel and whatnot. Um, and it's a little pricier, but it is definitely uh, something you should consider. Um, and if you don't need anything rust proof, then obviously there are a lot of cheaper choices right? You can get an actual freaking Endura. Um, although, again, with a step down in steel there. Um, it, but if you don't need rust proof, you can get a bunch of knives for a hundred bucks. But if you need every inch of this guy to be Swamp Witch approved, if you're looking for something that's big as well as waterproof, then by God, this is a really solid choice. And I would have zero problem recommending it to anybody anywhere. And I think that if you, uh, if you don't buy one and you end up with some rust problems, I think you might end up feeling just a little bit salty. Ah, okay, anyways, there you go. Um, and, you know, I'll admit some bias. Anyways, I hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. <laughs> Bye now.